We live in a fast-paced and hectic world where it's easy to feel overwhelmed, stressed, and out of control. How do you manage all the competing pressures without losing sense of yourself? How do you stay focused enough to not only plot a path, but follow it? Welcome to Master Your Life, a show that offers inspiration, insight, and intelligence, as well as success stories from many walks of life that can show you how you can control your own destiny. Our knowledgeable and entertaining host and her guests give practical advice that you can use every day in the quest to master your life. Now, here's your host, Leah Mattinson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Master Your Life, the show of insight, intelligence, and inspiration, where I ask you each episode to consider who is it you are right now and who is it you most want to be? What kind of life are you trying to create? And what are the things that are helping you to do that? And what are the things that might be getting in the way? of doing that. All right, now we're living in an incredibly difficult time to live sort of a masterful life with all of the restrictions that are in place in the world at the moment. And some people have restrictions all the time in their life and so have a deep appreciation for having a restricted life all of their life and others of us who have been uh, grown up in, you know, nicer conditions maybe haven't uh, been accustomed to actually having to deal with any kind of restrictions. And so there's a whole new paradigm of people exploring other options for travel and living and socializing and working. And I'm delighted to uh, welcome back to the show today, Crystal Evans. Hi, Crystal. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. And um, I love how you like talk about um, basically like embracing some things and letting go of some things. I think that's awesome. Because I think that's something we need to ask ourselves daily, like daily, what, what do I need to embrace today? And what do I need to let go of today? Because often on a daily basis, there's things that fall into categories on both sides of that. Yeah, absolutely. So Crystal, for the audience who isn't familiar with you, because you've done lots of wonderful things in your life, can you give a brief intro about who you are and what you're up to in the world? Where you are? (laughs) I am in Mexico. I've been traveling for the past two years. I've gone to Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and now I'm in Mexico. And Belize was in there. And uh, before that, I lived in Uganda where I built a hotel. I built a school for orphan and needy children and a tour company. I hear my son is crying for me. River, it's okay. You can come. All right. And so Crystal's been doing this not alone. Crystal's been doing this with uh, four children, four children along the way, yes, and as a single. So uh, some deep appreciation for that because it's not easy to to, uh, do that kind of amount of traveling even as a solo person. So there's lots to negotiate and navigate. That's why I was interested in having you on the show to start with because you see lots of people who are traveling and taking selfies of themselves, you know, on the beach. Yeah, now this is what my selfie looks like. That's right. So the selfie... It's not that like super sexy shot, you know, it's, it's, it's me and River. <laughs> River is, you should describe River for those who can't actually see oh, this. Yeah. So video. River is three years old yeah. and he is the most cheerful three-year-old sometimes. And sometimes he is the most grumpy um, three-year-old. And either way, he's very vocal about whichever he is. Hey, River, how you doing today, honey? River's got really cool, cool hair. And so, uh, yeah, he's just a great kid. We're glad to have him on the show again today. Maybe we'll... Curly hair. Yeah, so a sweet. Curly haired bunch and I don't have curly hair. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, how you doing? So we're, let's talk about what your business is up to. So Courageous Travel, you started recently um, to help people who are actually trying to do this world traveling thing and are running into barriers all over the place so that you, because you're on boots on the ground are actually really uh, frontline information about how people can actually uh, a travel and B, you know, kind of be looking at this community thing from your perspective. Maybe you could just talk a little bit about that. Oh yeah, sure. So I had a safari company, first of all, in, in Africa. And then when I moved to North America, I rebranded it and I was still doing safaris in East Africa. And basically now um, I just decided to embrace, first of all, travel for myself as a way to become a more courageous individual myself. Mm -hmm. Um, So one thing I'd heard is like that most multimillionaires had in common or millionaires in general 
was that they really faced their, their fears, whatever those fears were. Um, and so I've been facing my fears. I don't know if um, sometimes facing a natural fear like surfing is right. very challenging, but sometimes I think the business things that I have faced make it the natural things as less scary too. So it, it works both ways. Sometimes when you like, you know, face something in business, um, whether it's just following through or taking a new step or developing something new, it takes, it takes a lot of guts to develop something new or reach out to new people. So that helps me be more courageous in the natural world. And then like going out and cliff jumping helps me be also just more courageous in my relationships and in my business. So I'm trying to live a courageous lifestyle. I'm still somewhat of a wimp, um, <laughs> but it's helping me. And I believe travel is one of those ways that we can embrace the more courageous part of ourselves. That's beautiful. Beautifully put. Yeah, I agree. There's so many things that uh, everyone's got their own journey too around, you know, wellness and internal well-being and physical discipline and uh, what our physical body can do and then what our emotional spiritual body can kind of do and tolerate. So uh, one thing that I, the show is about insight, intelligence and inspiration. And so when I first heard your story, I thought, oh, actually you have all three of those things in a pretty dynamite. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Well, I th really mean it because a lot of moms get really uh, thinking they can't do stuff. They get, you know, st caught up in their old stories about what they can't do because it's not safe or because they can't manage all the kids or they can't manage the schedules or, or all of that stuff. And um, it's not for everybody, but it's certainly for the people who are interested in living this uh, lifestyle. You're a bright, shiny example of what can be done, right? Thank so. You so much. And I think um, one thing that moms face in particular is not just their own stories, mm -hmm. but cultural stories um, and societal stories. I cannot tell you how many times I have been told as a mom, you can't dream. Like, yeah. they're like, well, you think about doing that when your your kids are all 18, then you can be irresponsible and dream. <laughs> and so this is like what moms are told all the time. And your dream might not be to travel the world with a whole bunch of kids on your hip and cl crawling all over you. But even in as simple as writing a book, even mm -hmm. as simple as having a little side hustle, um, even as simple as going on a mini vacation, even those things, mm -hmm. that's what society often tells moms, you know, yeah. that they have to like become these slaves to their children. And instead, my take is I want to live this beautiful, bold, amazing, messy life because it's messy. I tell my kids when I mess up, I ask my kids for their forgiveness and stuff, but mm -hmm. I want to live an exciting life so my kids know they can also live an exciting life. I want to do business so they know also know, hey, I could do a business if I want. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's a and you're a really good living example of what it is to be a creative being and to continue that uh, constant daily recreation. What are we creating today? And what am I creating today? And oh, I didn't really like that that much, or I really love doing this. So I'm going to do more of that. And then, you know, you might do that for a little while and then you change your mind. You know, like you've had a school, you've had a tour bus company, you've traveled around, you've had one child, then went, mm, then had another, uh, then had another, then had another. So there's all of this constant creation. And actually, uh, the show, you know, is about living life fully. And when we stop, when we get suppressed is when we start getting sick we start having disease, right? So it's like the people are confused about what causes disease is when we actually start allowing other people to suppress us. So again, um, to that, that is a very um, interesting take, I haven't really heard before, but it makes complete, complete sense. Yeah, yeah. So there you are in this creative, um, juicy flow of life sort of taking things. And I know you talked about a couple of the hits that you'd had on the last show. So if anyone wants to listen to those, please go back and listen to our first episode that you can catch that stuff on. Uh, because we have a little bit sh smaller, shorter show today. I want to give Crystal the uh, the ability to share some of her travels, her recent travels, so that you can see people are going, how can you be traveling now and during all this? I'll call it the shenanigans. So we... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the you know, the masking and the, the, uh, you know, inoculations and that kind of thing. So, so how are you doing it? How are you, have you gone for an inoculation? 
Um, absolutely not. And I'm a hundred percent not going to. I 99% of the time do not wear a mask. There a couple of times I've had to mm -hmm. is where you just can't cross like into the bank without putting it over you. But then even at the bank, after I cross that person who will not allow me to cross without having it, I pull it right down. And then they proceed to come to me a few hundred times while I'm in the line and ask me to, my oh, yarn's okay, to, to pull it back up. Yeah. And usually, eventually they just leave me alone. <laughs> they give up, they give up. Yes. <laughs> so good for you. That's great. And so you brought some shows to you brought some pictures to for people to look at today. Again, if you're listening oh, to yes. the podcast, make sure that you uh, you get watch the video version, but we'll describe what you're sharing. Oh, um, sure. And first yeah. of all, I'm just going to show you my dress and tell you a story about my dress. Yes. I wore it in particular, my son is trying to grab at my breast. So he's not going to be very happy. <laughs> there we are. That, this dress, if you can't see it, is floral. It has some green, some pink. Yeah, um, very cute. The reason why I decided to wear this dress and the story behind this particular dress is that, um, you know, some stores I can't go into to purchase stuff because of my choice to not mask. Right. But then I've tried to decide to make a good outlook upon this. So this was an open store, didn't have like glass in the window, the whole side of the wall opens up and there's a store, but there's the mask police. That's what I call them, the mask. Police. Right. Um, and they're not really police, but you know, the people who are standing there making sure you do not enter their store without wearing a mask. Right. So they had like their sales section right next to the side. I knew if I went deep into the store, I was gonna get like chased down and clobbered by these police masks. So I decided just to tiptoe into the store next to the sales section and they all had their eyes on me like, Right. <laughs> and I, I knew my time limit was short. So right. I chose this dress out and then they're like, well, you can't buy it. You have to wear a mask. And I pulled out my money. I gave them the dress and they gave my, my them the money. They right. like, you can't buy it. You don't have a mask. I held out the dress. I held out the money. And you know, this went on for a few minutes. I was like, you can go and purchase it on my behalf since you will not allow me into your store. And this is what I've done at several places that just won't budge and won't let me into their stores without a mask. There are some stores I go into just fine without a mask. I don't get harassed at all. Right. Um, so, but with stores that do, this is my new take on it. I, I become the queen or the boss or the one in charge, right? right? Instead of feeling like the victim, oh, poor me, I, I can't do something. I tell them, okay, well, in the vegetable stand, I can look over and peer into the vegetables and stand. Please give me two grapefruits, five mandarins, 10 bananas, and seven tomatoes. And then they go proceed, pick them all up for me and come and collect my money. So I just Perfect. make the most of it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It is like you're the queen of the village, right? Just yes, go get it. Excited. I'm just going to be the queen. <laughs> so, um, wherever you guys are, if it's all at all possible for you to become the queen or king, do it. <laughs> right. Do but it. Also. Um, in general, that's been my take is make the most out of things. Yeah. Um, be compassionate to the police mask, but also take a stand. Um, so like with being compassionate with the police masks, um, like one thing I did on my travels was literally a policeman sat down next to me. Mm -hmm. And he went to order his food. And then I stopped and I paid his food. I'm not at all happy that police are going around telling people, hey, you have to wear a mask or else you're going to be fine. Because I've had that also happen from real police officers. Right. Um, but one thing is, if I choose to respond to them with compassion, mm -hmm. it's going to make me less angry every time I see a police and less fearful of them every time I see a police. But also is going to make the police every act of kindness by civilians to police is also going to make them feel less angry when they see us who are yep. unmasking yep. less irritated when they see us so it it works compassion in in both ways 
because ultimately, while it's very wrong that they're just following orders, and we mm -hmm. know we're just following orders has got societies and cultures in the past, and it's very not okay place. Um, I feel like if, if I don't show compassion to them, how do I expect them to also show understanding to me if I'm coming from a different perspective? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. just a little side note. Yeah. Let's all show compassion to the police masks, people, the ones that are just, you know, your neighbor who might want to wear your mask person or, <laughs> or the actual police. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It was funny. I'd had this little insight just a couple of weeks ago because I'm been I don't even own one. So I was like, but watching how freaked out people are and understanding they're really what it is again, because I don't even watch I don't watch mainstream media either. Well, that's a hundred percent key. Right. But then I then you also don't understand how free, freaked out people really are by this thing. But I'm so not freaked out because I know I know what I know, right? So I just sure. go, why are you guys all so afraid? And then Somebody was just telling me about, you know, a few of the instances I said, that's what you actually believe. You believe this is going to kill you. You like that you're going to die as a mid age, middle age, you're in pretty good shape person and that your kid, that's actually what you believe. And I was like, yeah, because all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, you have totally been mind. Uh, your mind has been hijacked, but, but my mind hasn't because I don't watch that mainstream um, daily death count and all that. So my frame of reference is very different. Um, Thanks oh, to, that's, yeah. That's, um, I have a kind of interesting story to tell you on that side before I jump in and share photos. Yes. So I've been talking to my old high school coach. Oh. And he wanted to come and visit me, but then he was a bit afraid about COVID and everything. So this right. morning I got a message from him. Crystal, sorry you haven't heard from me for a while. I got COVID, but I'm okay. Like you said, I was going to be, because I told him, you right. know, well, don't worry, but you know, I respect if you don't want to yeah. come. But I said, you know, I think you'll be fine if you even get it. And so he's, he's got it. And so now he's not afraid to travel though, because so it worked out good. Um, good. You good. know, I'm not like celebrating that he got it, but at the same time, yeah. it's kind of nice because now he's got it. Now he's not afraid about it. And now he's going to come down right. here and be able to travel without fear. But mm -hmm. my message to people is if you are only listening to the mainstream media, turn it off and seek some other insights because 99% of the population, I believe, makes it out of this fine. So um, I don't know the exact scientific numbers, mm -hmm. but it's not worth putting your life on hold about. Yeah, for the entirety of it. Yeah, but it, look at seasonal flu and imagine that that's the same outcome because they stopped actually measuring seasonal flu when this thing started. And yeah, it disappeared. Nobody it talks disappeared. About nobody, that. nobody has the seasonal flu anymore. So funny. Anyway, moving on, because we have talked about that on yeah. lots of episodes. And Crystal's from originally from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, for those of you who don't know. Um, and also your yeah, dual citizen. Washington State. Washington State. There you go. Washington State and Calgary, Alberta. So she's a, she's a world traveling Jesse. And now she's going to share some of her wonderful images. Yes. So I'm going to share my screen now. All right, share. And okay. So I always like to ask people at the beginning is what is your amazing, big, crazy dream? So I just want to encourage people to dream big. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we are. Okay. And then I'll go over to the next slide. Okay. So um, this first image here is last time I talked to you, I was volunteering with an organization for Christmas time. And I told you we were yeah. Um, wrapping up Christmas gifts downstairs yes. and I was upstairs trying to find a quiet place. So one of the things I did is they have a school out in this village and this picture was taken. I was standing, the school has like two levels. So I was standing on the upper level and I was able to look over into the community around them. And I took this picture of this girl and th this is um, like, you know, this is all they have. They have this wood house that they put together. She has a hammock that her and her mom sleep in. I saw her there with her mom. There's no door. There's nothing. And so um, one of the things that I'm doing now is I want to help fundraise money to build a house. It might not be for this specific girl because they say they have um, like a list in the community of families that they are helping um, and so actually from the last, the last time we talked together, somebody had listened and they reached out to me and asked, what are some ways they could help? And so I made this suggestion 
I said, you know, one of my things on my heart is to be able to help with a house build. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's just helping, you can just help somebody like this. You see, they don't even have a floor. So you can help them get a floor. You can help them to get a roof. I'm aiming to be able to get the funds together for a full house. But if we don't get a full house, we're going to help a family in some way. And no matter what this girl in particular, I'm going to go find her. I might not be able to help her with a house now, but I'm going to help her with her and her family with some food and maybe some other items, particularly for, for this girl. So um, that's, that was one part of my travels. So last part of my travels, I finished up volunteering here. You can just see this is like the community that they have their school built in. And what I like about being able to help in a community like this is I can help with something, but I'll know the children in the neighborhood are still gonna get help from the school and they sometimes help give them food and other things um, and help them emotionally, spiritually in the community. So that's great. Then next we went to Tulum. We only spent three days in Tulum and I decided to go camping. Mm -hmm. um, and they said most of the people they had camping there that they were, and I, oh, I don't think I described that photo so good. So I'm going to try to describe these other photos better. Um, so went camping in Tulum and they said, well, most of their visitors were monthly visitors. I was like, you would camp for a month. <laughs> right. But when I got there, I was like, oh, I could camp here for a month. <laughs> because it's just so beautiful, right? Oh my gosh beautiful so right yeah. here I have a picture of my son and he's jumping on the sand and there's a shadow and he's just so cheerful and so I I call this photo pure joy but, yeah and that's how I would explain my time in Tulum is pure joy the ocean was amazing the people I met were amazing and friendly it was just this super incredible experience to unzip the tent and you look right there and you just go out and be in the sand. So we basically spent, and here is um, a picture of my daughter on mm -hmm. the sand with a dog. She became friends with the dog and swam with the dog a lot. So cute. Um, yeah. And then my son, this is, I put jungle boy. He is a picture of my son. He's climbed up this palm tree and he's grabbed onto a palm leaf and is swinging himself on the palm leaf. That's the name jungle boy. Um, it. So it's just it. this wonderful, brilliant nature mm -hmm. experience. But one of the reasons why I bring my kids to the beach in particular is when you're on the beach, nobody's wearing a mask. And my thing is, I want my kids to be able to experience as much of a normal life as possible. C covering up your smile is not normal. Yeah. And I think it's not only traumatic for the person wearing the mask, but I think it's traumatic for us to go around and see mask, 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 mask. So I try to get my kids out of that environment as much as possible so they can just enjoy their childhood like children should enjoy their, their childhood. And so um, actually before I leave a talking about Tulum though, I'll share with you some of my experiences in Tulum regarding that. So in the town, Actually, I went into the town, not just the beach. And when I was, Bayer, don't move my photos, please. When I was in the town, oh, I don't know. She's, how to make them go back. I don't know how to make my photos go back. That's um, okay. When you were in the town. Anyways, so when I was in the town, there's some man actually on a microphone. And he's like, Tulum is a place that you, wears masks was the general <laughs> generality of it it was like if wow. you're not wearing a mask the police will find you blah 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 and then so right as he's saying this then some police walk by me and so I just started praying I'm like okay Christ's light is surrounding me I'm surrounded by light and I just yeah. create this bubble of light around me the police are not going to stop me <laughs> And they just walked by me like, like nothing. <laughs> so, um, but I personally did not like that vibe of being in town with people mm -hmm. shouting about how you have to wear a mask. Yeah, it's um, very sci-fi, right? It's very, uh, it's very science fiction-y. It's like Running Man where, you know, you got the voiceover of somebody really dark, the dark, <laughs> the dark energy trying to suck the light out of everybody. Exactly. And, I mean... Yeah. Talk about super creepo. 
<laughs> Super creepo. That's right. So uh, good thing. put in your earbuds. Good, also, good time. My transportation. So getting around. So yeah. a lot of people, they have like collectivos. They have told me that you can't ride in the collectivo without a mask. Uh, most of the time I have been able to, but then sometimes I will have to get out because they're, they're, they're like telling my children to pull up a mask. Yeah. And so then my children and my, one cool thing that happened while we were there, one time when I wanted to travel, um, somebody was leaving the campsite right at that time. So I just caught a ride with them. It wasn't a big deal. The time I took a taxi, the taxi asked me to wear a mask because there's a police check. Um, I said, no, I won't. But then what I did is when the police came, I just put my my head down because I know that if the taxi gets stopped, he's going to get a huge mm -hmm. fine. And so I try to, you know, walk this balance of mm -hmm. my values and also respecting the fact that other people are risking themselves to carry right. me around in their, mm -hmm. right. And so when, and then through, we went through the police checks and then he told me when the police checks were all over and then I put my, lifted my head back up. So um, that's what I did in that particular instant. And then another time um, I hitched a ride. And so we all piled into the back of a VW van with a Mexican family and the little girl, she had a ukulele and she played the ukulele and played a nice song for us. And I was like, this is way better right. than public transportation. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so I just say that to encourage people always look for, um, look for options. Don't feel like it's, don't feel like it's hopeless. And and expect like I, I see that person leaving at the same time as me is like just kind of a divine opening. So, you know, expect those divine openings in your life, whether it's in regards to this matter or other matters in your life, financial, spiritual, emotional, just wake up expecting the divine to move on your behalf. Yeah, love that. Love that. Love that. I think that's a key, a really key thing to not get uh, tied up in our own fiction about how hard our life is uh, before we've even stepped foot into the day. And uh, as we, we, we've got to kind of wrap the show now, uh, Crystal, but what's your sort of the uh, like two or three last minutes that we have? What would be the um, biggest two takeaways? Two or three last minutes yeah. would just be to tell people to get out and enjoy travel. Um, next time I'll share with you about two other great destinations, well, one other great destination I was in, which is Cozumel. Um, so I'll look forward to telling you about Cozumel. But yeah, my, I think I would end with that. Ex start the day with divine expectation. And I'll share with you an amazing story about that that has to do with my school. So with my school, oh, and I can stop my share now since we're on this beautiful sand picture, but I'll stop my share. Um, so at my school, when I had first built my school, I did not even own a laptop. Right. I always say, start with what's in your hand. So what was in my hand was a computer lab at a resort. So I was at the computer lab on the resort working. And this man, this couple comes and I felt like I should go talk to them and tell them about my school. So I did. And I offered them a little tour where we go see some viewpoints and we see the farms and we see somebody who helps us take care of some of the orphans and we <laughs> see the school. Well, when I get to the school, the man tells me an interesting story. He said, um, a few months ago, I felt like the creator was telling me that I need to help children. So I began to search, how can I help children? How can I help children? And then I felt the creator's voice tell me, no, the children are going to come to you. You are not going to go to them. And so he told me, today you have fulfilled that. You came to me. You brought the children to me. They became my best supporter. Yeah. I traveled to Poland to meet them. I went around to different meditation groups, spoke to their different meditation groups. Um, the founder and I went on TV together and um, talked to the people in Poland. We told them also this divine story. Um, so I leave yes. you with that. Expect divine connections. Expect um, things that are maybe hard and difficult. They are there. They're challenging. And even if you've woken up with something hard and difficult day after day after day, every day is still a good day to wake up and expect the best because you never know when it's going to be that day. But I think expectancy does 
expectancy is a door that we open for those blessings and those connections and those resources to come into our life. We don't determine when those blessings come in, those connections come in. But if we have a shut door, they're certainly not coming in. (laughs) That's right. Open the door. (laughs) Open the door. Open the damn door. So how can people get a hold of you, Crystal? Oh, they can email me at courageoustravel at gmail.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me right now. I'm kind of working on a little rebranding. So soon I'll have something a little more officially. But right now, that's how they can get a hold of me. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I just love your work. I think it's just incredible. And uh, it's always uplifting to chat. Same thing about you. I love watching your show. And I'm glad to get to know you. And I'm glad um, the strong voice you're being in these times, not only about what we're facing in these times, but just in general, uplifting people's spirits. And that's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, we're so awesome. High five. Virtual high five. Oh, a heart virtual hug. Mask free hugging. All right, there you there go. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're done for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I invite you to love yourselves, love each other, mind your mind, and just have a really excellent uh, rest of your day. That's all for us. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>